Welcome to our online Advent devotions from our Saviour Lutheran Church Rochdale. My name is Neil Bergman, one of the deacons here at our Saviour, and my wife Margaret Hubbers will also be helping out with today's devotion. Thanks to Lauren Krensky and Nick Ng for the music today, and we'll be using that same music throughout our weekly devotions. Similar to our Sunday services this year, our Advent devotions are based on material from a sacred art with the theme close to home. And today's devotion is on the theme of homesick. Just as when we're away from our home, we feel a yearning to return. Spiritually, Advent is a time of preparation, not just for the arrival of Jesus, but the arrival of the new order that Jesus ushers in. A world of justice and peace, a world that we are longing for in our hearts. We'll explore this theme through responsive calls, through scripture, song and prayers. We begin our devotion in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you be homesick for a place you've never known? We are homesick for a just world, for peace like rivers, for the end of suffering. We are homesick for joy that is contagious, for nations that feel like neighbours, and for hospitals that are empty. We are homesick for the world God promises. We are homesick, but we are on our way. The triune God is here, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is still creating. Let us worship our holy God. When you're a child and you get homesick at a sleepover or a camp, you call home and your parents come and get you. Sometimes that's what love looks like. Love bails us out. In the same way, when we call upon God to confess that we've messed up or forgotten or overlooked the truth, God answers with grace. God answers with love. So let us confess today, knowing that nothing could keep God from loving us. Gracious God, we find ourselves with two options every day, to stay homesick for the world you have in mind, or to give in to a world that has forgotten you. Do we hope against hope, or do we throw in the towel? Do we insist on a better world, or do we assume it's impossible? Forgive us for the days when we give up. Forgive us for numbing our homesick hurt instead of using it to fuel a better world. Kindle in us a hope that won't let go. Have mercy on us, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, even when we throw in the towel, even when we give up on hope, God does not give up on us. We are loved. We are claimed. We are invited closer to God's home. So hear and trust this good news. There is room for all in God's house and nothing can separate us from that love. We are claimed. We are forgiven. We are welcomed home. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Jerusalem, once so full of people, is now deserted. She who was once great among the nations now sits alone like a widow. Once the queen of all the earth, she is now a slave. She sobs through the night. Tears stream down her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one left to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her and become her enemies. The roads to Jerusalem are in mourning, for crowds no longer come to celebrate the festivals. The city gates are silent, her priests groan, her young women are crying. How bitter is her fate. Her oppressors have become her masters and her enemies prosper. For the Lord has punished Jerusalem for her many sins. Her children have been captured and taken away to distant lands. 
all the majesty of beautiful Jerusalem has been stripped away. Her princes are like starving deer searching for pasture. They are too weak to run from the pursuing enemy. In the midst of her sadness and wandering, Jerusalem remembers her ancient splendour. But now she has fallen to her enemy and there is no one to help her. Her enemy struck her down and laughed as she fell. And our response, our heart is restless until it rests in you. Our second reading is from the 21st chapter of the Gospel of Luke, reading from verse 25. And there will be strange signs in the moon, sun and stars. And here on earth the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth, for the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for your salvation is near. Then he gave them this illustration. Notice the fig tree or any other tree. When the leaves come out, you know without being told that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. And our response, our heart is restless until it rests in you.
This year at Our Saviour, we're using seasonal liturgy resources from a creative collective called Sanctified Art, both for our Sunday services and for our midweek Advent devotions. The overall theme of these resources this year is closer to home, and the focus for this first week of Advent is homesick. As you've probably already noticed from the opening words in Confession, homesick centres around the idea that our hearts are homesick for a better world, a just, fair, loving and equitable world. The first reading earlier was from Lamentations, written by the Israelites in exile in Babylon. In about 587 BC, Jerusalem had been sacked and many of its inhabitants taken as captives to live in Babylon. These first verses of Lamentations show how the people were homesick for a Jerusalem that no longer existed as they knew it. In the second reading, Jesus talks about the end of the age, not as a time to be feared, but as a time to look forward to. He explains that there will be signs, wars, famine, earthquake, plagues and turmoil that will precede Jesus' second coming. Traditionally in the church year, Advent begins by looking at Jesus' second coming. When we look forward to Christmas, it's not just a time to think about Jesus' incarnation more than 2,000 years ago, but also a time to remember that Jesus will come back again to take us to our heavenly home. Here the writer of Hebrews is talking about the patriarchs. Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Jacob. All of these died in faith without having received the promised land. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they're seeking a homeland. If they'd been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. So like these people of faith, we look forward to our heavenly home in the kingdom of God. As Jesus says in the gospel reading, in the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that the kingdom of God is near. But I don't think it's useful to live as if we are exiles in a hostile world waiting to go to our true home. Jesus' ministry makes it clear that we do not need to wait until his second coming to see the kingdom of God. In the first chapter of Mark, right at the start of Jesus' ministry, we read, Now after John the Baptist was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. I believe our real home, the one we're homesick for, is the kingdom of God which begins here on earth 
with Jesus coming as the Christmas child and continuing on to our, our eternal heavenly home. Jesus has already ushered in his new reign. The kingdom of God is available to us here and now if we want it. Jesus' death and resurrection means that we're assured of our eternal heavenly home after our earthly death. However, Jesus' incarnation at Christmas also means that this kingdom of God is here now, here on earth. We can choose to lament about a world of wars, plagues, floods and turmoil, or we can work towards a world of justice, peace and equity. Of course, by ourselves, we can do nothing. But strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we should have faith that the world can become a better place for all people and indeed for all creation. That is the world we're called to be homesick for, a world that we can choose to live and work for. And the reason that this home is within our reach is because of the God who took on human form to live among us and to show us what a better world can look like. And so we look forward to Christmas, not just as a celebration of the past, but as a reminder of a brighter future. Amen. The Advent of the Lord is near. New light dawning where there has been darkness. The Advent of the Lord is near. New hope reigning where there has been death and despair. The Advent of the Lord is near. New light, new hope new life for all creation. This is a season of preparation. We prepare for Christ, who broke the barriers between us and God, each other and God's creation. We wait with repentant hearts to prepare the way of the Lord. This is a season of watchfulness. We watch for the one who heard our cries and shared the suffering of our world. We wait in anticipation for God's light to penetrate the darkness and shine within us. This is a season of promise. We wait for the promised coming of Emmanuel, God with us, God for us, God in us. We wait in hope for our Redeemer to bring God's love into our broken world. This is a season of reflection. We expect to be transformed so that we can serve in God's kingdom as bearers of light. We wait expectantly for God's Saviour to come and dwell in our midst. This is a season of fulfilment. We await the promise of God's kingdom, wholeness, reconciliation and plenty for all. We wait for God's covenant to be fulfilled for God's kingdom to come in its fullness. This is a season of joyful anticipation. We anticipate the day when God's glory will be revealed to all people together. We wait expectantly, attentive to all the signs of Christ's coming. Lord, whose light shines in the darkness, have mercy upon us. Christ, whose birth gives hope to all creation, have mercy upon us. Lord, whose advent brings joy and love, grant us peace. God of the weary and waiting, Scripture tells us that where two or more are gathered, you are there. So we trust that you are here, listening to these words, drawing us close stirring hope awake in us, and for that we are grateful. We are so grateful. Today, Holy God, we feel close to home, close to you when our children are curious and happy, when we find moments of true connection, when we are brave enough to be who you call us to be. However, God, even with gratitude for our close-to-home moments, we also recognise that buried deep within us, we have homesick hearts. Holy God, we are homesick for a world we have not seen. 
We are homesick for a world where oceans are clean, trees are green, and animals are not endangered. We are homesick for days where mental health is not stigmatised, time is not a commodity, and self-worth is not a scarcity. God who never leaves us alone, we are carrying both hope and homesickness all at the same time. Hold these two sides of the same coin tenderly and fan the flame of both. For we realise hope is a gift and homesickness is a reminder. For each conviction we give you thanks. In Jesus' loving name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Space.